This is the largest rainforest left on Earth. We're heading deep into the Amazon, beyond the cloud forest, and into an unspoiled jungle to meet an indigenous tribe called the Atuar, the tribe of dreams. We're about to embark on an adventure, covering landscapes, wild animals, food. I'm your travel host, Alice Ford. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. You're not gonna wanna miss this South American series. This is Ecuador. This was my first time in Ecuador, and leaving Quito, the road took me south where I watched Cotopaxi Volcano fade into the distance, passing through dozens of small communities on the six-hour drive south to a teeny tiny airfield and a teeny tiny plane. Where we're heading is completely inaccessible to vehicles, and flying east, civilization quickly disappeared. And through the wispy clouds, all that could be seen was rainforest in every direction. Once we land, we'll be jumping in a boat to get to the Achuar's homeland, which spans more than two million acres of inhospitable jungle. This dirt landing strip that we're landing on in the middle of the rainforest is one of the only ways these indigenous groups are able to have a connection to the outside world. Welcome to Kapawi Lodge. This lodge is owned and maintained by the indigenous tribe of the Ashuar. And over the next few days, I'm gonna get an inside look into what life is like here, experiencing some of the wildlife, what it's like to boat down this beautiful tributary of the Amazon, and see what life is like in their tribe. The property at Kapawi is complete immersion in the rainforest, and it's quite luxurious for being so far removed from modern conveniences. With 10 huts for guests and several thatched lodges for communal activities, one for meals and ceremonies and another for yoga. After exploring the property, I relaxed on my hammock and then got ready to hit the river with Diego in search of some pink dolphins. Kapawi sits at the convergence of two rivers, the Capuari and the Pastasa, which is one of the headwaters to the Amazon. It may look like a murky soup of fast-moving water, but it's teeming with species and life. One of the more exciting species is the river dolphin, and in the Amazon there are two species, the endangered pink dolphin and the Amazon Tacoxi river dolphin, both of them endangered freshwater dolphins. And it wasn't long after reaching the convergence of these two rivers near the lodge that we saw a dolphin and a baby peeking out of the water. As the sun faded on my first day in the Amazon, we stopped for a quick walk on a black sand beach and then returned to the lodge for dinner and my first night with the sounds of the Amazon. So many noises out there in the rainforest. The evening is when all of the noises really come to life. It's probably about 10 times louder now that the sun has dropped than it was during the day. There's a lot more in store over the next couple of days, but today was a great start here on the Amazon. I just keep pinching myself. <laughs> and it's hard to believe I'm finally here in the Amazon, just experiencing, you know, the world's largest rainforest and one of the most biodiverse places on the planet. Pretty awesome.
One of the things I know you're gonna love about the Amazon is all of the birds, so don't forget your binoculars. The Amazon has more than 1,300 species of bird, and this morning I was up early to see parrots. Unbeknownst to me, parrots actually eat clay as a natural detox, and they happen to have a favorite spot not far from the lodge. You can actually hear the parrots long before you can see them as they blend so easily into the thick trees with their green camouflage. And these small green parrots were best spotted through binoculars, but watching them fly in pairs was such a treat. Like penguins, they mate for life and could often be spotted flying in tandem over the river to the other side of the rainforest. For me, there's nothing worse than going to some fantastic new destination or far off the grid and getting sick, injured, or even getting food poisoning. A lot of times I'm traveling to places where modern medicine is not very close. So if and when I do get sick, trying to find a doctor or a pharmacy can be extremely difficult, which is why I'm super excited to share today's video sponsor, The Jace Case. The Jace Case has all the antibiotics you need to be prepared for an emergency. And the best part is that you don't have to waste your time making a doctor's appointment. Now, this company was started by a board certified doctor and the kit comes with five antibiotics. It's super easy to get. You just fill out an online form at jacemedical.com and a board certified physician sends you your Jace case with antibiotics and a guidebook for treating infections like diarrhea, pneumonia, and other things you may come in contact with while traveling. Now each customer goes through a consultation and antibiotics are prescribed directly to you and this is available in the US and Canada. If you love to travel like me, this is so important to have antibiotics on hand, especially if you're heading out on an adventure or somewhere where modern medicine may not be available. I'm gonna be taking the Jace case on all of my trips from now on because this really takes the stress out of my trips so I can enjoy each and every moment. You can check out the link in the description for more information and to get your Jace case before your next trip. Ecuador is one of the most biodiverse places on the planet. As you can hear in the background here, it is so full of life, small to big, lots of insects. There are more than 23,000 species of plants and animals that live in Ecuador and more than 15% of the bird population also calls this country home with much of that biodiversity right here in the Amazon. Today I'm going to be heading out with one of the Achuar to learn more about some of the medicinal plants here in the forest and there's no one better to learn this from than the people who have been living in harmony with nature for thousands of years in this area. The Achuar wear a traditional face paint every day made from a local plant called achote. So before our hike, Diego painted my face, placing stars on my cheeks. The Achuar actually follow a calendar based on a constellation that is viewable in the night sky most of the year, so stars are pretty important to them. The Achuar say the forest is all or mother and because the uh, forest provide everything I mean food mm -hmm. and medicinal plants material for construction and yeah or here also at short they don't need anything so that's the idea we respect the forest we love the forest this forest is literally a drugstore most of the antibiotics and a lot of the medications that we actually have at our local CVS or Walgreens either come from this forest or the medicines actually originated from plants, animals, and different things within this forest. So it's so fascinating to learn about the actual trees and plants and funguses that are here within this forest. Now, Diego was just showing me there's actually treatments in tree bark for malaria. There are treatments for cuts and scrapes. And one of the most fascinating things I saw was actually this wild garlic, which is so fragrant. It smells like garlic, jalapeno, and cilantro all mixed together. And if you actually macerate this up a bit, you can stick it in your nostrils, breathe it in, and it's actually a treatment for headaches.
Even the insects are of use to the Atuar. Ants and grubs from the date ponds are eaten different seasons, and termite mounds, which you can find in the ground or in trees, can actually be smoked or rubbed on you and used as an insect repellent. My afternoon was full of wonder. The forest here holds many sacred animals, plants, and spirits. And I was taken to one of the sacred spots within it at the Achuar's sacred Cebu tree. This tree has been used as a place of ceremony and meditation by the tribe for hundreds of years. And just being in its presence was a wonderful experience. It's so beautiful to witness a society still so heavily embodied and living in harmony with nature. A dying tradition even here in the Amazon. After meditation, it was time for a swim. And I know what you're thinking. You swam in the Amazon? What about the piranhas? And yes, I definitely felt a few things on my toes, but I came out of the water intact. And I will say I was super surprised by how fast the current was. You had to continue to swim or you'd just be swept away. Toes still on my feet, it was time to practice another tradition, the traditional hunting techniques of the Achuar using blow darts, which are made from the date palm and usually laced with poison to put the animal to sleep before oh, it's killed. Wow. The forest here doesn't just provide medicine, but food. And let me start off by saying, I've eaten some weird things in my day and age, but this might be the most peculiar. I actually asked Diego earlier if I could try some of their traditional foods here. And when we were in the forest, he told me about a bug that lays its larvae in the tops of the date palms. And they actually harvest these. And tonight we're gonna try some. This is the worm or larva, and it, this worm is used in the hard palm. Mm, yes. Yeah, the idea is uh, we, we take the heart of the palm and after that the char come back to see, collect the worm. Just one bite or two bites? Surprisingly, these grubs actually tasted like corn nuts, but with a slightly different texture. <laughs> Crunchy and squishy at the same time. It's crunchy. All of it. Mm, one bite. Yeah, really? <laughs> one of the other really unique experiences here at Kapawi is being able to go out on a night hike there's actually a self-guided trail here on the property. I'm not going by myself though. There are lots of creepy crawlers out there, so if you're afraid of bugs, this may not be for you, but tonight is all about the insects and the amphibians and the things that go bug. Ceremony is a huge part of the Achuar lifestyle, and tribe families every morning drink Wayusa tea. It's boiled over a fire and drunk in wooden bowls until you throw up. Now, traditionally, this purging is a fresh start to the day. After you've rid yourself of anything bad, you sit together as a family and use the time to have serious family discussions on life and future behaviors. I took part in this ceremony with Diego and one of the other guests, and 
I'm not much of a vomiter, not to be gross. So this is a bit challenging for me, but I drank as much tea as I possibly could. The Achuar also take a plant medicine called ayahuasca, which helps them facilitate dream states and make big decisions. This plant medicine is drunk in a similar fashion, but with a shaman present, and is traditionally done before hunts or when needing to make important decisions. In the last 10 or 20 years, ayahuasca has become a popular plant medicine that has spread like wildfire around the world. The shaman, uh, they use your medicinal plant, uh, a hallucinogenic plant also. Uh, it's, it's called ayahuasca, mm. natem in achuar. And he prepare your ayahuasca in infusion and then during the night, he drink the ayahuasca and also he start to to, to connect with the nature, asking the power of the of the nature, and then he start to, to sing, and then he used this this plant. This plant is called shake shake plant because it shake shake. Mm -hmm. Because produce a good sound, and also this plant is for cleansing ceremony. The idea is uh, the shaman need is start to check the the person who is sick and what is happening deep yeah. uh, uh, for him, and then uh, he he's shaking, cleaning, and uh, making like this. And then the idea is uh, the, the, the shaman, when he's singing, he, he's helping to, to clean, uh, to take all the bad energy from him. And then the idea is this one is, help, is good uh, for cleansing ceremony. It's, he's singing, as, uh, singing and also asking the energy of the forest and he starts to make like this. The Atua are one of just over a dozen tribes here in Ecuador and they believe actually in shamanism like many of the other indigenous tribes throughout the Amazon region and across the world. That way of life is changing, but it's projects just like this here at Kapawi Lodge that are working to preserve that way of life and to share their way of life with the outside world. And it's just such a beautiful thing to be able to share and preserve that in a way like this. You know, lots of indigenous groups are left with the choices of either living in the way that they have for centuries, not having any access to the outside world, or selling their resources to oil and gas companies or resource development. Here, the Achuar has really been adamant about not doing that. So it's projects just like this that help them preserve this way of life and not have to deforest the rainforest around here. My last activity was visiting the tribe Shaman or Supa. He is both the source for wisdom, medicine, and healing for several of the communities up and down the river. Being a shaman starts in childhood and takes years of training and practice. And with the old ways changing with the growing world, no one has yet decided to follow in his footsteps, which means he may be the last one this community ever has. This trip has been the colliding of two worlds so different than each other. Coming to the Amazon has just been unbelievable. Getting to stay here at Kapawi Lodge and experience the Amazon through the eyes of the indigenous peoples that have spent hundreds if not thousands of years here in this very rainforest. And it's just been a great reminder that we don't need so many possessions. We don't need so much stuff to have a happy life, to be at peace with ourselves and our neighbors. One of the things that I'm taking away from this trip is just how much filled with love, not only the people of Ecuador, but especially the people of the Amazon. They just care so deeply for not only each other and their neighbors, but the forest and the ecosystem here. So it's just been a beautiful thing to witness. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you want to come and stay here at Kapali Lodge, you can get more information on my website, trapganic.com, as they're one of our partner tour companies. And feel free to send me a DM or reach out to me on social media as well. I want to give a really big shout out to 
to the Ashmore community for letting me come and experience their culture, to Kapawi Lodge for helping make this video, and to you guys and my Patreon community for helping support this video as well. This was my first stop in Ecuador, so there's a lot more exploring to be done. So make sure you stay tuned if you're new. Hit subscribe and turn on those notifications so you don't miss any of my live videos or any of my regular videos as well. And don't forget to leave a comment down below with your favorite moment from this video or what you would do in the Amazon. Thank you guys so much for watching as always. I'm Alice Ward. Never stop exploring.